All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we are beginning experimental design. Experimental design is a part of the task list that typically gives people trouble in the beginning of their studies. But if you're able to grasp experimental design, it becomes very second nature, very intuitive, and will hopefully become one of the easier parts of your exam. Where we're going to start is the dependent and independent variables. This is the basis for any research. It's going to be the basis for any intervention you do. And it's vital we understand why it's called dependent and independent and how we distinguish the two and the importance of these when we are running experimental designs. As always, please subscribe for all of our video updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, and materials, including our combo pack. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. So let's start with what is experimental design. Experimental design in ABA is at the core about manipulating one variable and observing the effect it has on another. Whether we're doing a multiple baseline design, a changing criteria design, a withdrawal, what we're looking at is manipulating a variable and observing the effect it has on another. Now, from a clinician standpoint, when you manipulate a variable, you're typically looking at trying new interventions or new behavioral strategies to see the effect it has on your client's behavior. It's the same idea. So we describe these as the independent and dependent variable. The independent variable is what you are manipulating. Now, this could be the intervention, it's, it's whatever you're adding to the environment. This independent variable is what you're hoping affects the dependent variable, which is typically going to be your behavior. More often than not, the dependent variable is going to be the behavior that you're looking to change or modify in some way. So we're going to be measuring the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Now let's start with the independent variable, the variable that the researcher systematically manipulates or introduces to the environment to produce a change in behavior. So consider the independent variable, whatever it is you're adding. Think about your intervention, right? Are you putting in a token economy? That's your IV. Are you using a prompt? That's your independent variable. Your schedule of reinforcement, an extinction procedure, a reinforcement procedure. All these variables that you're introducing to the clients or the participants environment is an independent variable you're trying to see what effect these changes or manipulations have on their behavior so typically the intervention or treatment you're testing we call it independent because the participants behavior is not influencing the variable it's independent because it is independent of anything the participant is doing. You are in full control of this particular variable and you're trying to see and manipulate how this variable is going to change that behavior. So what do we call that behavior? We call it the dependent variable. It's the variable that is measured to see if it changes as a result of the manipulation of the independent variable. So the target behavior anticipated to change. If we just think about a simple graph right if our our behavior starts at some sort of steady state here we introduce right an independent variable here and it goes up the behavior increases well what conclusion can we start to draw now obviously we're going to need more manipulation and possibly reversals to make a stronger functional relationship but whatever we introduced this independent variable had an effect on the dependent variable and it changed it in some way. So the dependent variable or the behavior is dependent on our intervention. So it's really common sense if you think about it. The client's behavior is dependent on your treatment plan. Think about it that way. The treatment plan is the standard IV. The client behavior is the standard DV. The client's behavior is dependent on your treatment plan. If the intervention is effective, the DV is going to change some way. So for example, rate of aggression, duration on task, latency to respond, percentage of answers correct. Now notice 
all of these are some sort of measurement system, right? Because we're measuring the dependent variable. We need to define that dependent variable and choose what we're measuring about it, right? How is aggression changing? Well, we want to see the rate of progression going up or down. What about on task behavior? Is the duration increasing or decreasing? How is our independent variable affecting these dependent variables? Other things to consider, you want to control for extraneous variables. So if we are manipulating the IV to control the DV, well, in a perfect world, that would be pretty easy. There's nothing else going on. But we know in the real world, in the environment, they have all these extraneous variables happening all the time. Noises and people and distractions and phones and iPads and cookies. All these other variables are fighting, right, over what's going to control this behavior. We want to control as much as possible these extraneous variables. Can you control for everyone? Unless you're in a padded white box, it's nearly impossible, okay? So we've got to be as good as possible or as careful as possible for controlling these extra variables or these extraneous variables. Because what happens is these extraneous variables become confounds, if we have a situation where the IV isn't controlling the dependent variable, but rather the extraneous variable. So the extraneous variable becomes a confound if they're influencing the dependent variable without your control. So we're trying to avoid that situation because what we're trying to do is establish a clear relationship between the IV and DV to show experimental control. Bottom line, that's what you want to look, look for, a functional relationship between your intervention, your treatment plan, and the client's behavior. You want control, you want that relationship. That's what we're aiming for at the end of the day, to keep it as simple as possible. My treatment plan, I want it to control the client's behavior change, and I want to have a functional relationship between the two. So key takeaways, independent variable, the cause, right? This is what we're manipulating. This is what we're introducing. This is what we're trying to use to change the dependent variable, which is going to be our behavior and what we're measuring. We're trying to establish a functional relationship and that exists when the DV's change is reliably dependent on the IV's manipulation. Again, this is the first item of experimental design. Before you move on, understand truly understand what a dependent variable is, what an independent variable is, and what an extraneous variable and a compound variable are. Again, think of it like this. The independent variable is your treatment plan. Your treatment plan, we're trying to change behavior. So hopefully their behavior is dependent on your treatment plan. If you have all these extra variables outside and one influences right, the behavior, that becomes a confound. Simple as that. Be sure to subscribe and like all of our videos. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.